very warm and pleasant good afternoon to one and all welcome to law seekers thorough newspaper analysis for 28th of october 2023 chale uh, in the today's agenda we'll be talking about some interesting news and editorial related to center to introduce dna face matching systems at police station across country which we have taken from the hindu then we'll be talking about some interesting news update which includes the national and the international news and lastly jaise hamara pattern chalta hai hum log kuch supreme court aur high court ke judgments aur order ke bare mein baat karenge chaliye so the first editorial that we'll be taking about is related to the introduction of the dna and the face matching system across 1300 police station by the center so uh, the particular implementation is with respect to uh, the central procedure identification act which was passed uh, last year in april 2022 in which the center is set to roll out dna and face matching system at across 1300 police station across the country now the provisions of this particular act needs to be implemented entirely it 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 uh, requires some more time but as there are logistic and connectivity issues too the law enables the central and the police investigating agencies to collect store and analyze physical biological samples including retina and iris scans of arrested persons so this is one step ahead where we are talking about the collection of the dna and the face matching samples of the arrested person by the police officials this implementation is with respect to the central identification proce uh, criminal procedure identification act which was passed last year now uh the national criminal record bureau that is ncrb a central organization is tasked with rolling out of the act which was assigned the task of finalizing the standard operating procedures to be followed by the police officers so what is happening here that uh, because of the passing of the act you know various standard of procedures need to be followed various uh, sop needs to be adhered to so this particular responsibility was given to the ncrb though the act and the rules of the particular act do not explicitly talks about the collection of the dna samples and the face matching procedure uh, the ncrb in the meeting with the state police official informed that the said measures would be rolled out in around 1300 locations spread across the police district commissioners and the headquarters now in this particular context of collection of data there was a committee which was formed which named as domain committee and uh, the domain committee was envisaged with successful implementation of this act with representative from the state police central law enforcement agencies and other key stakeholders so ye jo particular committee ke members the wo kaun kaun the state police officials the central law enforcement agencies thi for other key stakeholders the now this technical sub committee was you know preparing the sops for capturing dna as a measurement has also been constituted now the state was asked to identify the location and the preparation of site for the collection of data and the central uh, the central body under the home ministry will be the repository of the database at the national level so state ki zimmedari kya thi state ki zimmedari ye thi to identify the locations and prepare the site where the measurement collection unit would be formed and the data would be collected at the national level now one of the delhi police officials said that they are recording measurements such as thumb and finger impressions and photographs of the accused persons according to the old format and were also using national automated fingerprint identification system so this was particularly was done till now so they what they were collecting they were collecting thumb impressions finger impressions photograph of the arrested person under uh, the national automated fingerprints fingerprint identification system uh, 
Another project maintained and managed by NCRB where uh, the scanners and the workstation will be put around 1300 police station. It has fingerprint details, uh, a unique 10 digit number of more than one crore people accused and convicted across the country. And the database has also been integrated with the act, which is called as Criminal Procedure Identification Act. So I hope I'm clear that why this particular collection of data has been there, under which act uh, they have got the powers, and why this particular data has been collected. Now, this, are, this is the one aspect that we talked about. Now, the other aspect that we need to talk about is that the particular act is replacing the 100-year-old Identification of Prisoners Act 1920, uh, in which the scope was very limited. The police officials were collecting the finger impressions, footprints, photographs of the convicted person and a specific category of arrested and non-convicted persons. Okay, so there were less uh, scrutiny of the arrested accused persons. Okay, now the official said that uh, there can be, oh, they cautioned that there can be a misuse of database by ensuring identification and deployment of appropriate safeguard, adding that only designated official must have access in real time. So, the point is that the detailed information that would be collected, the DNA samples that would be collected can be misused. So, the, the use of that particular data should be by the designated official and it should have the access of real time. Now, the police official also said that the, the training and the resources would be a major problem because generally police are often short of funds uh, though the Home Ministry will bear the cost of hardware and others and the cost of the secure internet line and other operating costs will have to be borne by the state. So, this is there. Now, NCRP has said the tools in the system used by the police should be technologically, legally and forensically sound and accredited. But in this particular case, the opposition party held that terming this bill as unconstitutional, which directly attacks the right of privacy. So we talked about the context that why this in this particular act, the data is being collected. But at the same time, it can infringe the right of privacy. At the same time, it can the data can be misused. At the same time, we need a technologically, legally sound system infrastructure we need. So this is something that needs a balance and we need to uh, look upon the other aspect of this particular act as well. So I hope uh, the particular editorial and the context behind this particular act has been cleared. Uh, moving on to the national news of the day, Arjun Munda to inaugurate Adi Mahotsav on October 25th at Ahmedabad. Now, who is Arjun Munda? Arjun Munda is a union minister of travel affairs and he would be inaugurating Adi Mahotsav, which will be celebrated in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Uh, the mega event has been organized by the Tribal Cooperative Marketing Development Federation of India Limited. Now, Adi Mahotsa, beside other attractions of handicraft, handloom, pottery, jewelry, will be showcasing millets grown by tribals. So, millets are also grown by the tribals. Additional 15 stalls are dedicated to Van Dhan Vikas Kendra. Products crafted from mushrooms, mahua flowers, nagali millets, mango pickles, bamboo articles, and wild honey. So the particular uh, the, the particular event is related to the tribals. Now coming up to the next national news. In a first India EU carry out joint naval drills in Gulf of Guana. So India and European Union has conducted their joint naval exercise in Gulf of Guinea on the west coast of Africa to boost maritime security cooperation to support the region. Now, the, the Indian, uh, this is the Indian Navy's second combat drill with a group of nations after the inaugural maritime exercise in May with Asian at Changi Naval Base. Now, such drill, according to the Indian Navy Department, underlined the shared commitment of India and EU to support the architecture that is the regional maritime security structure of West Africa 
in ensuring maritime security in Gulf of Guana, signaling a common determination to uphold the United Nations Convention on Law of Sea. So this particular naval drill is, is also supporting, uh, you know, the United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea. Chale? BRO, that is Border Road Organization, completes Kandi Tunnel ahead of schedule in Jammu and Kashmir. So it's a 260 meter long Kandi Tunnel ahead of scheduled in the ongoing project Sampar on National Highway 144A, which connects Akhnur with Poonch in Jammu and Kashmir. So BRO has completed this particular tunnel. Lieutenant Colonel Sunil Bhatwal said that it is commendable feat of engineering. The first four tunnels, including 260 meters Kandi Tunnel, has achieved its breakthrough. He further added that the tunnel work with which commenced in March 2023 has been remarkable progress despite facing several adverse weather conditions. So this particular tunnel has been complete by the Border uh, Road Organization. Chale, next national news ki taraf. BPRD, that is Bureau of Police Research and Development to conduct 5G hackathon with March 2023 to address challenges faced by law enforcement agency. So, the particular organization will conduct a 5G hackathon to address the challenges which are faced by the law enforcement agencies. Now, uh, he said the nine problem statements have been formulated to conduct a hackathon with students and startups. A cash award of 150,000 rupees will be given to each winning team. He said the hackathon will involve three stages of idea screening. Stage one, stage two will be done in virtual mode, whereas stage three in the physical mode. Chaliye. National news ke taraf badte hai aage. National Games Fencer Bhavani Defense title. Olympic Olympian Fencer C.A. Bhavani Devi, representing Tamil Nadu, defended her National Games gold medal in the Women's Sapre individual event after beating S. Swamiya of Kerala by 15 5 in the final. Now, in the Women's Laser Run, Ujala of Haryana clinched the gold ahead of Yogini Umakan Saluke of Maharashtra and Neha Yadav of Madhya Pradesh. So we have started with the national championship and national games in which Fensa Bhavani has defeated a title and clinched the gold medal. Okay? Shall I? India ranks third with maximum fintech unicorns in 2023. So in globally, uh, the India has been ranked third in the financial technology unicorn with the United States and the UK maintaining their positions for the top two countries. Now, uh, these eight unicorns, including Visa and MasterCard, collectively contribute to total valuation of US $1.2 trillion. Despite hosting only eight unicorns, China took second place. Okay, in India, Notable profitable companies in the fintech sector include Zerodha, a stock brokerage firm, Buildex, a fintech firm, Paytm, among others. Fintech giants like Zerodha, Razorpay, Pine Labs, Paytm, Buildesk, and other also have achieved the profitability. So, a very big achievement. India ranks third with maximum fintech unicorns in 2023. Qatar hands Death penalty to eight former Indian Navy men. Government explores legal option. So, there are eight Navy personals who have been arrested in an alleged case of espionage were handed the death sentence by the court in Qatar Thursday. Calling the ruling very deeply shocking, India said it is exploring all legal options. The Indian nationals, all employees of Doha based Dahara Global, were taken into custody in August 2022. The charges against the Indian national were not made public by Qatari authorities, but sources said the Indians have been working in their private capacity with Dahara Global to oversee the induction of Italian small stellate submarines U212. Now, who are the arrested persons? They are identified as Captain Navteet Singhil. Captain Birendra Kumar Verma, 
कैप्टन सौरभ वशिष्ठ कमांडर अमित नागपाल कमांडर पुरु तिवारी कमांडर सुगे नेकर पकाला कमांडर संजीव गुप्ता एंड सेलर राकेश नाउ चार्जेस वर आल्सो फ्रेम अगेंस्ट टू कतारी नेशनल वन ऑफ हुम इज खमीज अल अजमी सीईओ ऑफ देहरा ग्लोबल अल अजमी वाज केप्ट इन सॉलिटरी कंफाइनमेंट फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ 2 मंथ्स स्टार्टिंग 2022 अक्टूबर एंड अंटिल ही वाज ग्रांटेड बेल so it's a very shocking news coming for the indian nationals that the indian navy man has been given death sentence unless who for the best that we sail through this particular uh, you know release of them now international news ki taraf chalte hain china ex premier li kengwang sidelined by xi jinping dies at 68 china's former premier li kengwang died of heart attack just 10 months after retiring from a decade in office during his reformist star had deemed now li was a premier and head of china's cabinet under xi for a decade until stepping down from all political positions in march the leader who brought transformational reform to china's economy li wo reform and opening up will will not stop the young sea and the yellow river will not reverse course Putin says first segment of ISS replacement to orbit by 2027. Now Russian President Mr. Vladimir Putin said the first segment of the new space station that Moscow plans to construct to replace ISS should be in orbit by 2027. The creation of new Russian orbital station has instead been announced as the main priority for the space agency's roscosmos now the president also asked those overseeing the sector to resolve problems with salary that are too low in russia space industry and try to attract foreign specialists as well as increase private business employment now iss model a model of international cooperation mainly between us and russia begin in 1988 and was due to demolished in 2024 however nasa its estimates it can continue to operate till 2030 okay guys so it, the the particular news relates to the space station now robert fico becomes slovakia's new prime minister au robert fico has become slovakia's new prime minister her left populist sima party won against the liberal western oriented progressive slovakia by nearly 7 percentage point now fico a parliamentary majority by signing a coalition government deal with helas a voice party and a slovak national party he had praised neighboring hungary leader viktor orban as a politician for defending his country's interests and could make alliance with him where there interest aligned even though he has railed against brussels and the us fico has repeatedly said that he has no intention of removing slovakia from european union or a nato military alliance so robert fico yaad rakhiyega ye naam robert fico because examination mein prime ministers president jahan jahan pe political changes aate hain uske questions aate hain तो जुडिशरी पर्सपेक्टिव से ये सारे नाम को जरूर याद रखिएगा लीगल अपडेट विच इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द ऑनरेबल केरला हाईकोर्ट इन द केस ऑफ शमशुदीन वर्स स्टेट ऑफ केरला पावर टू अक्यूज कांट बी रिवोक्ड बाय एग्जीक्यूटिव सब डिविजनल और डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट अंडर सेक्शन वन ठीक है अब चलिए अब हम बात करते हैं The Kerala High Court has held that executive magistrate, ya sub divisional magistrate, ya district magistrate cannot accuse, acquit, and accuse under Section two fifty six CRPC while invoking the powers under Section one thirty three CRPC by issuing conditional order for the prevention of nuisance. So court clarified that the powers which are granted under Section one thirty three. uh empowered the district sub divisional and executive magistrate to issue a conditional order for removal of license nuisance 
based on a police report or other information, but not based on a complaint. Okay? Now, Section 133 kya provide karta hai? It provides that the district magistrate, subdivisional magistrate, or any other executive magistrate shall issue a conditional order for removal of nuisance based on police report or other information and not based on complaint. The court also noted that the respondent in section 133 case cannot be treated as accused. So clear ho gaya? Court ne kya bola? Kerala High Court ko ye bola court ne ki ye particular powers cannot be invoked by executive ya subdivisional ya district magistrate under section 133 CRPC. Now, the next legal update coming from the Supreme Court in the case of MABBG versus Sunita. To hold a medical practitioner liable for negligence, a higher threshold limit must be met. So, Supreme Court, while hearing a set of appeal pertaining to medical negligence, matter observed that to hold a medical practitioner liable for negligence, a higher threshold limit must be met. So, this is to ensure that these doctors are focused on deciding the best course of treatment as per their assessment rather than being concerned about possible persecution or harassment that they may be subjected to in high-risk medical situation. So, what did court said? A higher threshold limit must be met in order to hold a medical practitioner liable for negligence. We look for medicine to be orderly field of knowledge and procedure, but it is not. It is an imperfect science, an enterprise of constantly changing knowledge, uncertain information, fallible individual, and at the same time, lives on the line. There is a science in what we do, yes, but also as habit, intuition, and sometimes plain old guessing. The gap between what we know and what we aim for persists and this gap complicates everything we do. So the court further added on giving a judgment on medical negligence. That's all for the today's news update and the legal news. If you have previous TNA ka revision karna hai, to aaj ka description mein jo daily news link diya gaya hai, daily quiz ka link diya gaya hai, usse attempt zaroor kariye ga, kyunki wo aapki competitive exam ko clear karne mein help karenge. Uh, now, today being the Saturday, the next TNA will be coming on Monday with a huge lot of news. Take care and happy weekend.